Welcome to part 3 of this industrial building blender tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous parts, then you can check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in this part, we're going to be doing a little bit more modeling of the buildings, and then we'll be modeling the patio and the stairs and the railing. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the tutorial files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And joining my Patreon page is a great way to help support the channel each month, because if you join one of my Patreon memberships, you'll be helping to support me monthly, and you'll get access to lots of Blender content like procedural materials, 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, and so much more Blender content. And then one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about my Geometry Node modifier products, which you can use in your 3D project. So I have an Ivy and Vines Geometry Nodes product where the vines follow a curve so you can move the curve around and then the vines will move along the curve and the vines also have customizable values created with the Geometry Nodes to customize the curve. I also have a customizable chain links where chain links follow a curve and you can also change some of the settings of the chain links and you can also change the type of chains. I also have a hanging paper lanterns where you can decorate any of your 3D scenes. I also have a Geometry Nodes rock generator where you can generate different types of rocks, and the product also comes with some different rock materials. And I also have a customizable brick wall, as well as Geometry Nodes created with Christmas lights. So if you'd like to check out any of my Geometry Node products, I'll have links to those in the description. So here's where we left off in the previous part, and what I'm going to start by doing is select this brown building here, and we'll go to the modifiers, and we're going to add another mirror modifier to this, so we'll add a mirror. Let's scroll down here on the mirror modifier and on the mirror modifier mirror object we're going to click on the eyedropper and we're going to choose the center building right here that way i can move this around and you can see it's going to be mirrored from the center of where the building is so what we're now going to do is move both of the buildings together until they are just about touching each other. And then we're going to move it forward on the y-axis, and we're going to bring it pretty far forward, so it's about that far. So we're now going to model another piece that's going to be like a dark colored piece, and it will go all along the top of the buildings here. So I'll press Shift-C to center the 3D cursor, we're going to add a cube, and we'll bring the cube up here. We'll go into edit mode, and we're going to scale it down so it's a bit smaller, and then we'll scale it up on the x-axis. We're going to make it a little little bit longer than all the buildings so scale it about there let's select this building and kind of pull it out just a little bit there and then we can also select the back of the cube and we'll bring the back of the cube all the way to the end so right about like that let's go to front view now and I'll go into edit mode and I want to scale this down a little bit more and then back in object mode we're going to bring it up a little bit and then we will select everything in edit mode and we're going to duplicate everything and move it up here and then we'll just scale everything out so it's a little bit bigger let's go to top view we'll go to wireframe and scale everything out on the y-axis a bit so that this part here is about the same thickness as this part here so that's looking pretty good and let's go back to solid view make sure i just bring it up a bit and also scale it up on the z-axis just a little bit something like that maybe select everything and bring it down just a little and then what i'm going to do is select both of these buildings at once and we'll go into edit mode and i'm going to go into wireframe view let's go to the vertex select and i'm just going to select the top vertices there and go back to solid view and i want to bring everything up just a bit more on the z-axis so it's a little bit taller so that is pretty good, maybe just a tiny bit taller. All right, we'll select this object, and I wanna add the same modifiers, so we're gonna select this object and then shift select this middle building. We'll use Control L and we'll copy the modifiers, and then we will shade this and we'll do the shade auto smooth. Then let's go here to the materials. We're going to click on the material drop down and we are going to add the black metal material. So we can now get started creating the patio and the stairs and the railing. So we'll go to the add menu. We're going to add a new cube and I'll go to front view. We'll bring the cube up right here. We'll go into edit mode and we're going to scale it down on the Z axis, scale it up on the X axis. And we're going to scale the cube out just so that it touches the very edges of those brown buildings. So just like that and maybe make it a tad bit thinner. Then if we go to the face select, we'll select the face here. Let's also bring everything back to make sure it's going in the building and then select the front face and we'll bring it out a bit. Let's go to top view and we'll go to wireframe and I'm going to bring this out so that it is about three and a half grids out from the x-axis line. So we'll go one, two, three, and then about three and a half. So just like that, go back to the solid view. So I now want to create a lip on the side of the railing. So we'll select this face and we'll duplicate it. 
create it and then immediately after that we'll scale it and I want to scale it mostly up on the z-axis but not so much on the x-axis but just a little bit and I'm also going to bring it this way over here to the right side a little bit like that and then I'm going to add a loop cut here we'll add a loop cut on that face and bring it over we'll bring it right there then I want to hit the L key to select that entire object and we'll extrude it out so it has a little bit of thickness and then if I select this face here select that face we'll extrude that face way back into the building and it is a little bit thick right now so I think I will select that face and just bring it in just a little bit so if I select those two faces just make them a bit more thin. And then back in edit mode, I'm going to select that face there and I'll duplicate that face and we're gonna move it over there. And we're just gonna stick it right there in the corner and then we can extrude it out like that. And then if I select that face there, I'll extrude this here. And I actually want to select that entire piece and we'll move it out a little bit because this is where the stairs are gonna start. So I need the stairs to be farther out so they don't hit into the gray bricks. So then we'll select this face here and bring it back into the building. So now this part here and this part here, these are where the stairs are gonna be. So we're just gonna select these two faces right here. So let's now go to the front view and we're gonna extrude them and then we'll move them over here and we're gonna move them to about right here where the gray bricks end. And then we'll bring it down on the Z axis to the ground. And then we'll extrude out just a little bit farther, kind of halfway in the middle of that part of the building. So just like that. So now the stairs are gonna be right in here. Let's also select this face and this face. And to make it a little bit less tall, we'll just bring it down a little bit. And I need to select everything and recalculate the normals again. So we'll go back to object mode and we're gonna model a stair. So I'll go to the add menu, we'll add a cube and I'll bring the cube up here. Let's go into edit mode and I'll make the cube really small and make it really flat. And then I can scale it up and I can make it fit and go right in there in those two beams there, those metal beams in between the stairs. We'll make it a little bit thicker as well and maybe make it a little bit thicker on the Z axis. So something like that. And then back in object mode, we're gonna go to front view and we'll go to wireframe and I'm gonna bring the stairs over there and then in edit mode, I can scale them up and I wanna do this in wireframe view so I can see how long the lip there on the side of the stairs are. So I just wanna scale it up so that they fit the stairs so they're basically as big as they can be. So something like that, maybe move that over just a little. So now I can add our array modifier and we're gonna array it down. So we'll go to the modifiers, we're gonna add an array modifier and we can start by turning the count up a bit and then I can drag the factor X and we're gonna make it negative. So we'll drag it to a negative value, so like that. And then we can also drag it on the Z axis to bring it up and down. And we're just gonna stick it about there. Now I'm actually gonna turn the count up to 14 because I want 14 steps. And you can see now it's definitely a bit too far, so I can drag the Z value to bring it up and drag the X value. And we just wanna keep on moving around the X value and the Z value until those bottom of the stairs are right there. So if I go to front view again, we're pretty close. So I need to drag the X a little bit more over and I'm holding down my shift key to make my movements more sensitive. It's like that. And then I can just bring it up just a little bit. Now you can see some of these are a little bit too big. So it's overlapping just a little. So if I go into edit mode, we'll go back to wireframe. I'm just gonna scale the entire thing a little bit smaller and maybe move it over slightly. All right, so now you can see it's a little bit off again because we changed the object shape. So just move it over on the X axis and just fit it there. So that's looking good. You can see now all the stairs are inside that metal piece. So if I go back to solid view, you can see that looks really good. So now let's model the railing and we're just gonna model one piece and then we will add an array modifier and array it over. So again, I'm going to add a new cube and let's bring the cube right up here. We'll zoom into it and I'll go into edit mode and we're just gonna scale it down so it's really thin and then scale it up on the Z axis and make it kind of small. Back in object mode, we're gonna bring it right over here and we're just gonna stick it in the very corner. If I go to top view, I'm gonna bring it right over here and stick it in the very corner of that patio and bring it down a bit. Now we should select this object here, this person, and I actually wanna duplicate these a few more times and just put the person around so we can kind of make sure we're getting the scale correct. So maybe duplicate another one there, and then we can duplicate a couple of the people, just put them here and there just so that we can kind of get a good idea of the scale of things. So now if I go back here to the railing, let's move this guy over pretty close to the railing. And you can see I wanna make the railing a little bit taller but not too much taller. So I'll go into edit mode and I'll bring this top face just a bit higher. So something like that. So now we're gonna add a loop cut right here. We'll bring the loop cut up and then we're just going to select this face and we'll extrude this face out and we'll just bring it out. Again, we're just making one of them and then we're going to add the array modifier to array it over. 
Then we'll also add a few more loop cuts. So we'll add a loop cut here. We'll also add another loop cut. We'll put that loop there. And then back on the face select, we're gonna select this face and we'll extrude it out. And then if we select both of these faces, I can scale them on the X axis by zero just to flatten them. And then these are gonna be connecting to the array. So we wanna delete those faces. And then we also wanna select these faces and delete them because they're connecting to the array as well. And also this one here on the top, I think I wanna bring it down a little bit so it's more of a square shape. So now we'll go to the face select and we're just gonna select these faces and we'll duplicate them and move them down and we'll scale them in. So we're gonna scale them, but we're gonna hit shift X to exclude the X axis and we'll make this a bit smaller. And then we'll just deselect this side and this side we're gonna move into that metal piece right there. We'll select this again. Let's scale it again, shift X to make it really small. And this is gonna be kind of like a little metal piece or it's gonna be like a metal cord. Let's move it up here and then we'll duplicate it and move it down. And once we do do that because we did that all in one action because I duplicated it, moved it down on the Z axis all in one action. I can now press shift R. Shift R is going to repeat the last action so I can just make a bunch of them. And then if I select all of them here, maybe I'll move them up and scale them down a little bit so they're more in the very center. So just like that. So that's going to be one of them. So now we'll go to add modifier. We're going to add an array modifier and on the factor X, we want to make it negative one instead of one. And now I can just turn up the count to a big number until it's going all the way over here to the very end. Now you can can see that it's not quite the correct size so we can now change that by going into edit mode and we can just select these vertices here and we can move them along the x-axis and we can make that just the correct size that we need so we'll go to front view we'll move it along the x-axis and I'm gonna make it a bit farther and then let's turn it down here so we'll just turn the count down to 12 and we'll bring that right there so it's at the very end we'll go back to object mode and I will press shift D to duplicate We'll duplicate this and then we'll move it and we'll move it into a backup. That way I can select this object and we can apply the mirror by just clicking on the apply button. So now it's all geometry. So now what I can do is go to front view, let's go to wireframe, and I'm just gonna box select two of these. So just that one and that one. And we can also deselect these little pieces right here because those connect to the other one. So I'll duplicate this and we're gonna move this over here. Let's go back to solid view. And I'm gonna bring this over on the very end and we're gonna bring it together so it's just about touching. So just like that. So now we want to merge these. So we'll select everything. We'll use M and we're going to merge by distance. And you can see it's removed 104 vertices. So let's now go to front view again and go to wireframe. We're going to deselect everything. And we're just going to box select these ones here. And we'll bring them down. And we're going to bring them all the way down here. And just stick it right about there, kind of on the end. Maybe bring it back a bit. And then if we box select this, we'll bring it down into the ground. So now if I look around here, you can see we have that nice railing coming down the stairs. And then if I go into edit mode, I want to add some more of those beams going down along the stairs. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut and I'll scroll my mouse wheel so there are more loops. And I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel until there are seven cuts. And you can see right up in here in the corner it says cut seven. So I'll now left click and right click so they just stay in the center there. Then I'll go to the edge select and I'm just going to alt and select all of these edges. So we're just going to select those edges there, but I don't want to select the faces or the vertices. We're just going to select these edges because I want to add a bevel to these edges. So with all of them selected, I'll press Control B, move my mouse out until they're about a square. Then what I can do is go to the face select, and we're just going to select all the faces there on the very bottom that we created with that bevel. So just select those faces right there, and then we'll extrude those faces down, and we'll extrude them down on the Z axis, and just bring that right down there. All right, that is good. Go back to object node. Let's save this project again, and that is looking really good. So now I want to make this, but I want to have it on the other side. So I'll just go into edit mode I'll just select everything and I'll duplicate everything and we're just gonna move it right over here and we're just gonna make sure that these beams here which are right next to the stairs they're going to be moved back right there so that they're just touching that little lip piece or this little spot right there so I will go to top view and I'll go to wireframe and I'm just going to box select all these vertices here and we'll delete those vertices because we don't need them. So now if I zoom into this part here, we want to extrude this part out to the end. So we can first fill these faces. So if I select these four vertices here, these here, I'll fill those faces and then these here fill those faces. And also you can see these right here are kind of going through. So I'm going to just select those there by holding down the alt key and the shift key. We're just gonna select all those there and we'll just bring them back very slightly on the x-axis that are going inside there. All right, so now what I wanna do is go to wireframe. We're just gonna box select two of them, so just like that. And also we don't need these spots right there and we don't need these spots right here. 
and we don't need those. So we're just gonna select that spot right there. So back in solid view, I'm gonna duplicate it, move it over, and I'll go to top view, we'll go to wireframe. I'm gonna bring it over here and then we'll rotate it on 90 degrees. And then let's zoom into this part and we're gonna bring it over on the X axis and we're just gonna stick it right in there and we're gonna make sure it's overlapping. So I'll actually zoom in really close and just stick it right there so that they're overlapping each other. So now what I can do is select everything. We'll use M and we're gonna merge by distance. You can see it says it removed zero vertices, but if you click right behind me on the merge distance setting, you can turn this up to a bigger value. And if I just turn this up to a very small number, I don't wanna turn it up too high, but if I just turn it up to a very small number of like a 0 0.0071, you can see it's removed 34 vertices. So now if I select these pieces, kind of move them around, you can see that it's gotten rid of those and merged them together. Now you don't want to turn up too high because if you turn up too high, it's going to start to merge these faces together. So you don't want to do that. If I hit M and merge by distance and turn this up too high, you can see it starts to like get rid of the mesh because the vertices are close to each other, so it's removing it. So I just wanted to do that to a very small value. Let's also go into wireframe and I'm just going to box like this entire spark here and go back to solid view and I want to bring it forward a little bit because it was kind of going through this brick wall right there and then if I go back into wireframe and we're just gonna box select the end go back to solid view I'm gonna push it all the way over there and we can just stick it right there at the very end so we now want to just duplicate this one more time and move it over here so that there's railing there on the end so I'll go to front view let's go to wireframe and I can just box select all these vertices here and I can duplicate them and move them over and then if I go to top view, I can rotate them on the z-axis by 90 degrees. Let's hit seven on the numpad for top view, and I can move them over here, and I'll just bring them really close, and we're just gonna overlap this again. We're gonna use that overlapping trick. So we're gonna overlap it really close right there. And then you can see that this part here is going all the way into the building. So we'll select everything, we'll hit M, and we'll merge by distance. And that's gonna be way too big. You can see it's getting rid of those pieces we have there. So I wanna turn it way down to a much smaller value. And you can see if I turn this to like a 0 0.0071, it just removed 34 vertices. So you can see that it still has the faces there, so that's good. But then right over here on the end, on the corner here, you can see it's merged those together. All right, so that is looking good. So now I wanna add the same modifiers that we have for the buildings. So we're first gonna select the stairs and we'll click on the drop down and apply that modifier. Then we're going to select the railing and we're gonna select the base and the stairs. And then lastly, we're gonna shift select the center building. We'll use control L, so control L, and we are going to copy the modifiers. So now these objects here have the bevel and the weighted normal. Now if I select the patio again, and the railing and the stairs, I wanna use the object context menu and we'll just shade that smooth. And then finally, let's add the dark metal material. So we're gonna select all three of these again. We're gonna lastly select this piece here, which has the dark metal. We'll use control L, and this time we're going to link the materials. So they all have the same material. All right, let's press control S to save, and this will wrap it up for part three of the tutorial series. So thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you're easily able to follow along. So in the next part, in part four, we're gonna be creating the sidewalk and the street and also the dirt, and then we'll set up some lighting as well. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and I'll also have the link in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.